Good morning. I'm glad to be able to join you this morning for uh, manna. Um, we're going to look into the book of Psalms today. So before we start, let's go to the Lord in prayer. Father, as we come before you, we just thank you for your beauty that you've given us. We thank you for your grace that abounds. We thank you for protection and shelter. We thank you for all the goodness that you've poured upon us through your son, Jesus Christ. And Lord, we just ask that this morning that people would be touched and, and encouraged by your word because, Father, we love your word. It gives us direction and it sets boundaries for our lives so that we can live the fullest in the life of Christ. In Jesus' name, amen. Last time we were together, um, I read out of Psalms 23, and that was David uh, who wrote that when he was out in the shepherd's fields. And um, I thought it would be a good idea to, to continue on that kind of a trip where we're going to be reading out of Psalm 68 this morning where David was in a place of rest. God had given him rest from his enemies because last time we were together we talked Psalms 23, the Lord is my shepherd. And it talks about leading us into a place of rest and getting to know who our God is and his character through his word. And so I pick Psalm 68 because at this time, David was at rest from his enemies. God had given him a break. They were taking the ark from Obed-Edom and bringing it back to Jerusalem. Um, and as David was in that place of rest, he began to reveal more of the character and nature of God, which we get to experience through the life of Christ Jesus. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and start reading um, Psalm 68, verse 1. Let God arise. Let his enemies be scattered. Let those who hate him flee before him. As smoke is driven away, so drive them away. As wax melts before the fire, let the wicked perish in the presence of God. But let the righteous be glad. Let them rejoice before God. Yes, let them rejoice exceedingly. Verse 4 says, Sing to God praises to his name. Exalt him who rides on the clouds. And by his name, Yah, Rejoice before him. A father of the fatherless, a defender of widows. Again, that's the nature of our God. Is God in his holy habitation? God sets the solidarity in families. He brings out those who bound into prosperity, but the rebellious dwell in the land. O oh God, when you have went out before your people, when you marched through the wilderness, Selah, the earth shook, the heavens also dropped rain in the presence of God. Sinai itself was moved in the presence of God and God of Israel. You, O God, sent plentiful rain, whereby you confirmed your inheritance. Verse 10 says, When, in, when it was weary, your, congreg your congregation dwelt, and it was you, O God, that provided your goodness for the poor. I'm going to stop at verse 10 for a second because I want you to reflect on the last 10 verses of the character and nature of God in this time of the pandemic where we've gotten through the um, stay-at-home order, uh, April 30th, and we've seen God's goodness and mercy flow to us. I want you to go back and just ponder and, and meditate on verses 1 through 10, how David is reminding us the goodness of God, how God scatters his enemies. There's no one that can stand against God. And Jesus is here to help us walk through hard times, to give us prosperity, to be a father to the fatherless, to be there for the widows. You know, um, there's a lot of talk in this day and age of possible recessions and this and that. But those that trust in the name of Jesus Christ will be taken care of and will be saved. Let's go into verse 11. The Lord gave the word. Great was the company of those who proclaimed it. Kings of armies flee. They flee. And she who remains at home divides the spoil. Though you lie down in the sheepfolds, you will be like wings of a dove covered with silver, her feathers with yellow gold, when the Almighty scatters the kings in it. And white as, soul, white as snow in Zalam, the mountain of God, Basham, a mountain of many peaks, is the mountain of Basham. Why do you fume with envy, mountains of many peaks? What is the mountain which God 
is to dwell in? Yes, the Lord will dwell in it forever. We're going to stop at verse 16. But this goes to verse 35 of Psalm 68. And just read through it and be encouraged by His Word. Because this Word is for you, His people, the beloved. You are God's beloved. And through Christ Jesus, we find salvation. We find strength where there are hard times. And we find the promises of God. I had a, a gentleman told me one time when I was a young uh, disciple. He said, in God's word, there's a, something we call a pick. A promise, instruction, or a command. And so when I look through God's word, I always look for his promises. I always look for his instructions. And I always look for his commands. So maybe that's, that'll help give you a little bit more of a study tool when you're looking through the Word of God. Remember that P-I-C, Promise, Instruction, Command. Anyway, I'm going to stop there. We're going to close in prayer. It was great being with you. Lord Jesus, we just ask you to come and that you would open up your promises to us. We would understand your instructions. And Father, that we will walk out the commandments of God. But the two most important is love the Lord the God with all our heart, mind, and soul, and love your neighbor as yourself. Father, let us walk in that in Christ Jesus. As we hold firmly onto you this week, and as we gather together in your name, what a glorious time we will have. In Jesus' name, amen.